He who is only an athlete is too crude, too vulgar, too much a savage. He who is a scholar only is too soft, too effeminate. The ideal citizen is the scholar-athlete, the man of thoughts and the man of action. Plato. Something that seems to be most fundamental in most philosophy, or at least or the idea of individuation or self-actualization, is this basic idea of bringing, basic but complicated idea of bringing duality together, bringing polarity together, bringing opposites together to create and formulate something authentic, something truly powerful and worthwhile in all possible ways. For example, we see this in the basic explanation of Plato's athlete scholar, as he calls it. He understood and recognised that there are two innate energies in man and woman or humanity, the feminine and masculine are these two fundamental energies that are innate, and how they both orientate around a set of characteristics and expressions. The feminine is very much brooding, contemplative, a sort of ocean dweller, if you will, that feels out all these different tremors in the sea and in the ocean of life, whereby the masculine force is very action-based, direct, disciplined, and focused towards a specific intent and desire. It maintains boundaries and is the force behind movements or disobedience to preserve freedoms, you could say. Now this is what Plato was pointing out. The scholar is very feminine and the athlete is very masculine. But for there to be something of an ideal citizen, as he says, a perfectly orientated character, you need to in some way integrate both energies, both this masculine and feminine energy within everyone to create what he called the ideal citizen. And this was to integrate, integrate both opposites into the soul or to create a complete soul for oneself. Now there has been other ways in which this has been explained. For example, Jung was all about integrating the animus or the anima and the opposite energies or to integrate the shadow uh, as one of his most famous pieces of psychological analysis. But he understood and pointed out that there is actually a psychological law or psychological rule that plays out, which all fundamentally depends on how you actually orientate your psyche, your mentality. He says that, quote, when an inner situation is not made conscious, it happens outside as fate. The individual remains undivided and, and does not become conscious of his or her inner opposite. The world perforce act out the conflict and be torn into opposing hearts." End quote. Now why is this such an important observation? When you don't integrate the opposites, when you don't, for example, realise the feminine and masculine, or form the authentic scholar, as Plato would call it, of oneself, let's say, your rejection of that specific opposite will make itself known as fate externally. The rejection will become alive in the real external world and maybe even play havoc on you and your life via an external force of the opposite of which you have not made conscious within yourself. Now, when we think of today, we are very much globally seeing on the horizons some kind of new world order that is fascist on an international scale. It is a tyrant. It wants to tell you what to do and how to do it continuously. So you could say that, there, that the reason for this is because of the, maybe let's say, the neoliberal zeitgeist of modern contemporary culture. People have forgotten who they could truly become on a mass scale. People have left behind their discipline for the production of higher creative success and have instead accepted the poor dealings of basic, unfulfilling materialism that is dished to them on a daily basis to satisfy their instincts in an unspiritual and pa unpassionate way. That we have become inactive on a passionate and spiritual level fundamentally forgot how to demand 
our lives forth in a direction that satisfies our core instincts that are rooted in a living, breathing world. But most people have become the last man, as Nietzsche always claims in his books like Thus Spoke Zarathustra. They can't stand up for the courage and innovation of individual authenticity and truth that comes from it. That we instead like and enjoy to be ordered about by external forces because we've not integrated that part of ourself that could demand our own futures forward. It is in some frightening sense that our ability to demand our own rights forth into reality with power of masculine energy and determination has become one of our biggest collective shadows in, in the West and internationally, maybe. That is dependent on the way we have been socially conditioned in and of the past 20 years or so, how we have been indoctrinated to curb our instincts into desiring some of the most unfulfilling pleasures that have been catered for us, that have no profound spiritual meaning or purpose for the sake of capital or monetary interest by these big corporations, by the likes of the works of Edward Bernays, let's say, to the point where people are so confused to even know or understand who they truly are as, as a person. And when in such a position, why would it be ever possible to integrate the opposites of the soul or of the psyche when the instincts of man and woman have been used for materialistic marketing tactics and campaigns, uh, campaigns that suck the soul out of what true human passion and life actually is? But what we can see here is the power of what Jung was referring to, that the unintegrated part of oneself will become our fate externally in some way or another. That this force plaguing down upon our lives is a very negative masculine force. It is something of a tyrant. It is tyrannical. It is authoritarian. It is fascist. It's a negative masculine energy. And it is here and coming closer by each ticking hour because people have lost their own, let's say, masculine spirit to prioritise those freedoms into place and to make boundaries. This is why it has become our fate because it follows the psychological law on a collective level and it is to come towards us as conflict and as a higher message from maybe even the world to us. The world sometimes tells us the, the most silent of truths sometimes, but when we are given the tools to see them, we can actually see them in complete reality and with the highest of clear visions. We need boundaries, we need to learn how to stay grounded, we need a moral philosophy, we need to follow principles so that we are not easily manipulated by something like the media. When we do, we cannot be mentally abused as so many have been in something like the past year during this entire mess that we've been living in. We need to understand what we truly care about with what we need, we want and desire for our future instead of living for what we have been told to desire by others for us to bend our will to it. Doing and knowing these things are to be done with something like this masculine energy which is lacking. That can be found within all of us because they are direct and focused intentions that ground our boundaries into the deeper movable sand. So that snakes, let's say, metaphorically, in the grass, cannot come along and unhinge all our values, priorities and first principles that we so deeply cherish on a fundamental level. We need that athletic spirit that Plato was talking about, like I was saying at the start. We need to be crude and direct with what our societies want on a basic level. And this is something I see that is fundamentally necessary to integrate and accept everything about you or to simply realize and enlighten oneself that we, we all become, so that we all become self-understood individuals in all the possible ways that there may be so that you know where you stand and you know how to stand when needs be it is true that life is what it ends up being because it depends on every single action the reason why life is you could say suffering is because everyone could be better at everything than they were yesterday things can always be better if people were simply just better at this kind of realization and then putting that realization into some form of action we all live in this kind of magnificent existence right 
called life, and each individual decision pushes the future into a particular direction. But people so often say to themselves with a, de a degrading and sad, defeatist attitude, well, it doesn't really matter, my actions don't really make a difference when they do. Everything that is happening now is based on our response, it is based on our actions, and if you are not happy with what is happening to your life or the world that you see around you, then you need to change your reality by changing your actions. What is the situation like right now for you personally? What is the situation of the world right now? You have to be disobedient towards the changes you do not want to see in the world to preserve things like freedom, things like liberty. And guess what? The harsh truth of equality is that if we don't step up to that plate of life that demands us forth on this collective level, we will all have to pay for our actions or our inactions in the most horrible equal way possible. Even for those who don't deserve it and never did. Because inaction is a silent action as it all depends on the collective, on each individual, on the collective consciousness you could say, and on that level of what that consciousness is at. You have to see that everything is this kind of internal personal test to see how well self-understood we all truly are, as if Mother Nature is telling, is testing us, a bit like in the elements towards a plant. And maybe it is necessary, maybe we need extreme degrees of suffering when the world is ignorant as a revitalization or as some sort of human catalyst to get stronger because it is also it is usually the case that loss itself truly tells us the values of things or the values of what we what we give to things through the process of loss and then regaining them but genuinely that is all a bit of a waste of time if the subjects themselves don't even desire to truly live you have to have people that want to live for there to be change, for their suffering to make them grow, otherwise it is completely pointless at every point of the, of the scale. And that is the question to everyone, really. How badly do you want to live? How badly do you want to experience the world and to experience all the flavours of joy, romance, heartache and love and whatever it may be, and emotions, because if you do not want it, then you are then you are just a coward of your own biological reality. You, you are this kind of weird inversion that has been conditioned to feel like this in this weird way through our societal conditioning. You are nothing but like, just some sort of shadow that is casted from nothing that wants to hold on to these pitiful comforts of your sad reality that are slowly getting pushed further and further away anyway while you bring down the rest of humanity with this inadequate selfishness. If you were truly selfish, in the best way possible, you would actually be selfish for humanity, you know, itself, and actually be selfish towards our future as a thriving species. But instead, these people are only selfish for their pathetic world because they can't do anything else. They are incapable of realisation and turning this kind of realisation into good practical action in some way or another. As if they like have hanged their consciousness from a tree by their necks, and that all that, all that is left is their hanging, rotting bodies with no sort of spiritualization to their actions or anything. And this is the thing, some people can only live by an action, because action is something they can't do, they're scared of doing, they're fearful of doing. And they've find, found this comfort of being an inactive individual that just lives for other people to tell them what to do. And that is what fundamentally is this Nietzschean last man, the last generation of human species that suck the world dry for survival and allow themselves to be degraded <clears throat> because they have no respect for themselves. And if they win, it would be like basically the last of us, the last generation of man, and all that could have been, basically. So I hope you understand the importance of this message in this video, the importance of realising the opposites within yourself and accepting that for who you are and allowing those elements to lead you forth in life with passion and conviction towards positive change. Because if you ever want life to be better or to at least live in a world to have the option even to make your life better, 
then we all need to play our part to preserve those born rights in whatever way that may be because we can all make ripples in some sense which influence the ocean of life and how it functions in this in this astounding metaphysical way whether locally or in your community or through this astoundingly powerful thing called the internet